It's the one place in Las Vegas where the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day is honored with allied exhibitions. A Nevada native gets an identity check. We're the one stop for all those New Year's resolutions. And there are many more stories at the Springs Preserve where all that matters is what's elemental. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, a peace treaty between Allied forces and Germany was signed that ended World War I. Well now, 100 years later, the Springs Preserve and the Nevada State Museum are allied in celebration of that historic occasion, with an exhibition spread across three locations on our property. This is the first time these neighboring institutions have collaborated on an exhibit marking the importance of remembering the historical significance of Armistice Day. The Springs exhibit is about over there and that's what we were kind of calling the exhibit. Our working title was over there, over here, kind of based off of the old World War I song. The Springs focuses on what it was like overseas for the people fighting there and then our exhibit is more about the Nevada home front, meaning what people were doing back home in terms of fundraising and knitting sweaters and buying Liberty Bonds. And we also knew that most folks did not know much about World War I. So we set out to tell the story of the war, what led to the war, um, how that happened, where it happened, what countries were involved, and then moving on into uh, what happened with the Nevada troops that were serving overseas during the war. The State Museum exhibit features actual documents, letters, postcards, and posters from the era. And a highlight of their exhibit is actual uniforms worn by veterans of the war. The uniforms are real uniforms. While we were getting this exhibit ready, we actually discovered that the name of the person who wore the Army uniform, we rarely have a complete picture like this in a museum, but from research that I did at UNLV Special Collections, I was able to find the name of the person who wore that Army uniform, and I also found a picture of him in the uniform. It was also impossible to ignore another element to the war that followed troops home. The Spanish flu actually started really developing just at the end of the war and one of the reasons it spread so quickly was because of troop movements overcrowded on trains and ships and so as men were coming back home to the United States and elsewhere around Europe the flu spread very quickly and um, in Nevada uh, it wasn't as bad as it was elsewhere. Luckily we didn't have a very big population so that helped. In the Big Springs Gallery in the Origin Museum, the exhibit focuses on the overall global significance of the war and the effect it had on the world at large. It was important to reinforce the idea that it was a world war. One thing that we did is we got the declarations of war of many of these countries and present them in the native language. So there's a lot of countries involved in the war that folks didn't quite realize were. China, Japan, Thailand, and then of course Russia, Germany, Serbia, England. The exhibit also provides some insight to what was happening on the home front, including music that was popular and what our troops were facing on the war front, such as the new threat of chemical weapons and how they prepared and what equipment they used. And then we wrap up with some stories of women during the war, African Americans, the home front, and uh, a little bit on uh, an honor roll recognizing all those from Nevada who lost their lives during the war. And at Boomtown, we just decorated the cottages to welcome the boys home. Um, that celebration would have not have been a one-day thing. Troops would have been coming home over months. So it was a process that took a very, very long time. These three locations combine to effectively tell a powerful story of this tumultuous time. A story that is global in scope, but made very personal in its local impact. Nevada's contribution to the war was relatively small in terms of persons and money, in terms of war, war savings bond money that was raised, that type of thing. Not so much that Nevadans don't care. In fact, we hit our quota for troops and war bond contributions faster than any other state, but we only sent you know, less than 2,000 uh, service men to the war effort, and a lot of that had to do with Nevada's very, very small population at the time. 
World War I isn't necessarily an American war. However, um, even though it's not really part of our collective memories as much as World War II, I would say that it is representative of who we were as a country at the time. And I just wanted people to have a sense of what it felt like to be alive at that time. We encourage everybody in the community to come and check it out, learn about World War I, maybe learn more about who we are as Americans and where we kind of fit in the history of, of the world. Getting lost in learning is the likely result in our latest traveling exhibit, Numbers in Nature, a Mirror Maze. Presented by the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, Numbers in Nature reveals the mysterious mathematical structure behind many elements in the natural world. From the radial symmetry of a snowflake to the Fibonacci spirals of a pine cone, these geometric patterns adhere to specific mathematic formulas. Numbers in Nature shows us these patterns exist even in our own bodies. As the centerpiece of the exhibit, the mirror maze is a dizzying array of mirrors that is in and of itself a pattern. Mirrored surfaces all around reflect the pattern so that it repeats and appears infinite. Like most of our exhibits, Numbers in Nature makes learning about math playful and interactive. And as always, this exhibit offers something for everyone to enjoy. Numbers in Nature, a mirror maze, is featured in our Origin Museum through January 6th. We might be partial, but we think a Springs Preserve membership is one gift that keeps on giving. To help us share this holiday spirit, we asked the members what the Springs Preserve means to them. Community, family, history, education, culture, and fun were heard on repeat. And with this much variety all in one place, there's something for everyone on your list. When I bring people to the Springs Preserve who've never been here before, they're amazed at the wealth of information, the experiences that are so not Las Vegas. Family can't come without coming here. And, um, and I've brought friends. Recently, I've brought friends who have grandchildren, who, and that's really fun, because you can see the kids really enjoying it. And there's just a lot of variations, a lot of different things for a lot of different people a lot of cultural events, so it's not just a single focus of here's a great place with a lot of plants, it's a lot of opportunities for cultures to come together and have events here as well. Plus all of the ethnographic and cultural things that it tells me about Las Vegas um, and all of that in one place is truly amazing. I know archaeologically it's very important, historically it's important, and uh, in, right in the center of Las Vegas is incredible. It's great, it's educational, it's fun, it's all of it. It's the whole package. Where else can you walk through gardens that are authentic to our desert and learn about our home and about the cultures of our home? And that's what I've loved about it the whole time is the energy of it. It's, it's extremely important for our community because this uh, place, it actually lets, lets you escape from the urban life. And if anything, it hopefully brings families together to do things very important. This is a family place. You can bring everybody and anybody and they're gonna love it. Coming to Springs is when you meet other families. You meet other kids and their parents. You know, you get to see Vegas from a completely different perspective that is more natural. It brings the whole family. You can bring dad, you can bring the kids, you can bring friends. So the places you go, you cannot take the kids or the dads are bored and this is a place for everybody, for the whole family. The history is so important when you're teaching your children, you know, what not only, you know, where they come from, but what their place is in their own current community. You know, we've moved quite a bit, and so to finally call a place home and settle there, it's a big deal for us because that means it had to have everything that we were looking for. Not just for, you know, our work and for each other, but for our family. I want them to have, have a place to come and be and learn about their home in a way that's nurturing. So it nurtures our family. Especially for people that have children, this is the place to go. It's like it's outside and they get to see what Nevada, what Las Vegas is made out of. It's all here. And this is one of those places where I can let them be free to run around. They have a good time and they really, really enjoy coming here. Pink Fizzard is a really cool place where you can learn. Like, you don't just have fun here, you can also learn and you can learn about animals. And you actually have to get to learn how how like how things are powered by energy. 
get to enjoy nature, see what's out there, and see the animals, birds, and life. I think it's important because it just, it brings value to a kid's life, and that's how our world becomes better and better growing, like the Springs Preserve. And they've been adding on. I mean, now there's the water exhibit, and there's the train, and then there's... And Boomtown. And Boomtown, thank you. There's all different kinds of things that they're continually adding to the preserve, so it's not a static thing. It's growing. So, and it's been growing as we've been growing. I watched her come in here as a three-year-old, just, you know, walking around, and as she grows and as she has learned to read, now she's reading all the labels, you know, on the exhibits. There's history here where they can learn about, you know, civilizations and other things when you go into the other exhibits that they're just not going to get by reading a book. It comes alive here in a way that I think more places should have. It naturally teaches sustainability and caring for your earth and being responsible just by its existence alone. It's, it's infused in every single turn that you make here about celebrating and honoring our, our history and our culture here in Nevada. We really support the uh, preservation of uh, nature facilities within Las Vegas because a lot of people think that, as I said, Las Vegas is just casinos or gambling uh, industry, which isn't true. So uh, we really love this place and we also want people in future generations to realize what Las Vegas really is all about. It's, it's, it's not only playing, but it's also nature and making connections within family. Our award-winning Springs Preserve gift shop is an attraction unto itself. We've gathered the best selection of locally created, sustainably produced items found in Las Vegas. Here you'll find one-of-a-kind jewelry, art, books, clothing, and much more. Many of these items are created by local artists and are exclusive to our gift shop. It's worth a trip on its own, or now you can buy Springs Preserve swag online. Our new online store features some of the most popular items from our gift shop. So stop by or get more information at springspreserve.org. Well, it's that time of year again. Time to trot out those annual resolutions to perhaps exercise more, take up a new hobby, or even enroll in some continuing education programs. Well, what if I told you there was one place that could help you make sure all those resolutions stick this time? Biking, gardening, art, science, whatever you're resolving to improve your life with, we've got it all right here at the Springs Preserve, starting with physical fitness. The nice part about here at the Springs Preserve is we've got miles of walking trails. Uh, it's a good place to go ahead and once a month meet with physicians for our walk with the doc. You can get free medical advice. And also once a month we have the Audubon Society that comes out for a bird walk. So it's a great place to go out and get in nature and get active and get fit. If you're interested in more of a mental workout, we conduct a wide variety of classes and workshops covering a number of topics. The nice part about the Springs Preserve and our educational programs is we try and be new and creative every year. So this year we've got a brand new garden series um, that will be uh, teaching people about soils, what grows here in the valley, uh, natural plants. Uh, we'll have some new classes on how to start your own garden. Maybe you don't have a particularly skilled green thumb, but you wish to incorporate green living into your everyday, well, we can help you with that too. We are Platinum LEED certified here, so the nice part is we show how the different buildings were made, show how you can be more sustainable. We have our NV Energy Foundation Sustainability Gallery where people can learn how to compost. They can go ahead and see the garbage truck recycling theater truck. Uh, they can go ahead and learn more how to go ahead and be more sustainable at home as well as in the community. For some additional incentive to stick to those resolution goals and perhaps expand your journey of discovery, we're offering a new Done in a Day badge program. Much like a Scout Merit Badge, the program provides a great way to explore all of what the Springs Preserve offers, then rewards you with a nice souvenir of your visit. 
So we'll have different things located throughout the Springs Preserve that uh, people that are typically not natives to Nevada that are one timers from from out of state that'll come in and we'll lead them throughout the Springs Preserve. So we'll give them a brief history on what we're all about. And then they're able to go ahead and bring that back to the Nature Exchange and collect their badge. Maybe you don't want structure in your visit and that's OK, too. Well, the nice part about that is we do offer a lot of a lot of different classes, but if somebody wants to come in and they just want to learn a little bit about the Springs Preserve in general, we've got our Miracle in the Mojave movie. It's very informal. You can go in, you can watch the movie, and then you can go into our, uh, our gallery, our Origin Museum, and look at all the different things like the Flash Flood exhibit, the live animals. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do at your own pace. So you don't have to sit in a formal classroom setting. You can wander around the Springs Preserve. We've got 180 acres to go ahead and, and explore. We've got the whole family covered with our core programs for the kids. And this year we continue with our enormously popular spring break and summer camps. Starting with junior camps for five-year-olds all the way to the counselors and training program for 15 to 17 year olds. The school year is an active time at the Springs Preserve with our ever popular field trips filling up quickly. But this year, we've decided to advance those experiences to the next level. One of the new things that we're going to be uh, starting this year is our backpack program for self-guided field trips uh, through CCSD schools, charter schools, private schools. They'll be able for $20 to come in and reserve a backpack, which is going to have GPS, educational uh, information on it. There'll be one for the history of the Springs Preserve. There'll be one for uh, animals that are local to the Springs Preserve. And we'll have a STEM-related backpack. Uh, they'll be able to go ahead and, and check that out and then they'll give them all the tools to go ahead and give a little bit more advanced self-guided field trip. Self-improvement takes commitment, but it doesn't have to be grueling or boring. With all the exciting programs we have coming up this year, you can make the Springs Preserve your one-stop resolution solution. One of the most exciting features of the Springs Preserve is the endless variety of earthly wonders that are always being brought in and sought after by our dedicated traders at the Nature Exchange. For our more sophisticated traders, our Nature Badge Program awards a whole series of badges to traders who are ready to advance to the next level of collecting and studying objects from the natural world. Stop by our Nature Exchange and complete a new booklet each month to show what you've collected and learned. The range of badges perfectly represents the world within the preserve property, but also inspires the curiosity of students about a whole universe of scientific subjects beyond our boundaries. The lessons are suited to all kinds of learners, from those who want a crash course to those who want to immerse themselves thoroughly in the material. For more information, see springspreserve.org. Many animals call Southern Nevada home, but there's one who's frequently prone to a case of mistaken identity. Today, we'll take a closer look at one popular but often misidentified desert dweller. If you've ever been out and about in the Las Vegas Valley, you may have seen this little guy running around, but that's no chipmunk. In fact, this critter's bigger cousins include prairie dogs and woodchucks. But if it's not a chipmunk, what is it? So there are over 200 species of squirrels in the U.S. and ground squirrels are native to the southwestern United States. And here in Las Vegas area, we do have three different ground squirrels that we find. We find the white-tailed antelope squirrel, the round-tailed ground squirrel, and the rock squirrel. And right here on the Springs Preserve, we have the white-tailed antelope squirrel. Like a chipmunk, the antelope ground squirrel has cheek pouches but you might be surprised by what's in them. Ground squirrels are omnivores, so they eat plant material, they really like seeds, and they will also eat insects or carrion if it's available. So they eat kind of a little bit of everything. So they're really good at stuffing their faces full of food and then caching it in their burrows. This animal only weighs about as much as a deck of cards when fully grown. But despite its diminutive size, it's tougher than you'd think hunting anthropods like spiders and occasionally going after small lizards. Unlike its chipmunk cousins who live in cooler forested areas, the antelope ground squirrel is able to survive body temperatures of over 104 degrees Fahrenheit and has other special behaviors to help it live in our desert heat. 
The ground squirrels handle our hot summers really well. They actually are diurnal, which means they're active during the day. So during those hot summers, they'll kind of hide out in their burrows during that hot part of the day and they're more active in the morning or the early evening. Uh, they do not hibernate in the winter, but they are maybe a little bit less active. They are active all year round and we see them out foraging for food, um, just kind of scurrying around. So if they're not hibernating in the winter, what are they doing? We'll see them diving back into their burrows if we get too close or if you sit back and watch, they'll come out and kind of look around and you'll see them go on off scurrying for some food or looking for more snacks. <laughs> and maybe a date? Breeding season lasts from February to about early June and they tend to have between five and maybe 16 or 17 babies and the average is about eight or nine. And then they stay with mom for the first year. They are sexually mature after a year, so mom is a grandma after their first year. <laughs> A good burrow is a great survival tool in the desert, and the antelope ground squirrel, ever the survivor, isn't shy about getting itself one, even if it is slightly used. Ground squirrels create their own burrows, but they also will take advantage of other burrows. Like if a kangaroo rat has built a burrow, they'll kind of take over, or they'll take that burrow. But they create really extensive burrowing systems, and when they have their young, their babies, they create a little nest chamber in there, and they line it with fur and twigs and maybe some vegetation. Besides making a cozy home, burrows provide essential protection from predators. They can dive into one of these nearby shelters to escape. Otherwise, their only defense is to outrun their hunter. This leads to one of their cutest looking behaviors, which is the ground squirrel equivalent of the neighborhood watch. They are on the menu for a lot of different animals. So they exhibit this behavior when, when they come out of their burrows or when they're kind of hanging out looking for food, they will stand up and look around. And what they're doing is looking around to make sure there isn't anything that is coming for it. With their omnivorous diet, climbing abilities, cool burrows, and large litter sizes, the antelope ground squirrel thrives in our desert. In fact, it's so self-sufficient, it doesn't need any help from humans. It's a good idea to not try to attract them or feed them in any way. This makes them dependent on humans, which if they are ever stopped being fed, then that's really detrimental to their lifestyle. It's a better idea to see these tough little cuties out in their natural habitat. The Springs Preserve has three and a half miles of trails winding among our 110 acres of pristine desert. So whether you hope to spot an antelope ground squirrel, a migrating hummingbird, or another amazing desert neighbor, the Springs Preserve has got you covered. Now that the days are nice and cool, it's a great time of year to fire up the oven and prepare a great seasonal dish. Chef Cicely shows us an easy and foolproof way to turn a common gourd into some delicious winter comfort food. Howdy folks, my name is Chef Cicely and thanks for joining me here at the Divine Cafe at the Springs Preserve. As that weather starts to cool down outside, it's nice to get into some dishes that are a little bit roasty and toasty. And one of my favorite uh, dishes or ingredients to use when I'm in that sort of mode and the weather is in that sort of mode outside is squash. Here I've got some butternut squash and these can be a little bit, well, difficult to work with or to cut. They're very firm, they're very stiff. I have a huge, really sharp knife and even I struggle to really slice that guy open. If I want to do anything easy with this, I'm going to take that squash and just throw it right on a parchment paper lined sheet pan and roast it completely whole at uh, about 275 or 300 for probably about an hour, hour and a half. And now this squash that was once super difficult to peel and I get a, quite a good amount of waste on it, now slices just like butter. You'll notice I didn't cut off any of the ends before I roasted it. I simply left it whole because then the inside steams. And you'll see how easy this is to just peel that skin right off. And then I've got two great parts that I can use. This first part, I'm going to slice up and saute. This guy now, I can slice him into a perfect medium dice 
little square. And that is just super elegant. I'm going to end up taking this portion and I am going to saute it with some butter, a little bit of salt, a little something sweet, and a little something spicy. Part two, now this guy's a little bit more daunting because when I cut into this side, I've got all these seeds in here, but now they just scoop out super easy. If I want to make another dish with this, I absolutely can. I just throw it right back in the oven, right back on that roasting pan, bake the little flesh off those seeds, and then they are good to go. You can season those with a little bit of salt, a little bit of butter as well. I'm going to make my second favorite dish. These go great in a compost pile or a vegetable stock. These guys are going to end up going right into a blender. It's a little bit of milk, a little bit of salt, and you can use an alternative milk or you could just use regular normal heavy milk and a little bit of spice. Carry that, reheat it, and I'll have the most wonderful bisque in no time. All right, we are over at our stovetop, and we are ready to saute our butternut squash. Side some butter in there. Got it nicely melted, and I've got a good simmer going on that squash. I'm going to add, as I said, a little bit of salt little bit of pepper and then for a little bit of spice some cayenne. For a milder flavor you could use a mild cayenne, you could use a super spicy one or even paprika. Now because this squash is already cooked I don't want to stir it up too much it'll start to break apart. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and melt. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a bit Make sure those spices are nicely and evenly coated. I'll do one more little batch of spices after it's done cooking when I'm ready to get it on the plate. But what I really want in the saute is for the caramelizing to happen. So that means I need to add a little bit of something sweet. One of my favorite sweet things is honey. So I'm just gonna drizzle some honey right over the top Listening here, I can hear how the sizzling kicks up, that sound, as the honey does its magic. Stir that in well to incorporate. There we go. Here's a perfect little example of the color I'm going for. If I can snag him right there. Nice browning going on. That is perfect. And now here we have butternut squash prepared using as much of it as we possibly could, creating two beautiful dishes. We have nice spicy and sweet butternut squash saute and also a beautiful soup. So when the weather gets brisk outside, get to cooking something warm inside or come on down and visit us here at the Divine Cafe at the Springs Preserve. Even after all the holiday packages have been unwrapped, there's still a chance to give one last present to the earth by donating your live Christmas tree to a valley-wide recycling program that will chip it into a life-giving, water-saving, sweet-smelling layer of mulch that will cover our community parks and gardens. From December 26th through January 15th, drop off your Christmas tree here at the Springs Preserve or at one of more than 30 drop sites across the valley to be recycled and reused at no charge. See springspreserve.org for details. There's a lot more to discover, so join us next time here at the Springs Preserve, where the allies of Armistice, the gift of membership, and Resolution Solutions mingle to bring new life to Las Vegas. <laughs>